Hello everyone, welcome to the .NET office. In this video, we will discuss about at the rate input and at the rate output directive. So while implementing an app, Angular application, we have used most of the time at the rate input and output directive. So basically the use of the at the rate input, like if we want to send the information from parent to child component, then we use the at the rate input and vice versa like from the child component to the parent component if you want to send some information or the data then we use the at the rate output directive so let's go to the visual studio and in this visual studio you can see app component is my parent component and here what i have done there is a one tip and in that i have taken a h2 and i have written i am a parent html and from here i am i created a one div and in this div you can see I'm calling the app component from here as in child component and in this I have taken a uh, my input message so basically this is a property if you will go to the component side here you can see like it's an app component so here you can see I have one title and there is another property called my input message so this I'm passing from this parent to the child and if you will see this property my input message so i have uh, attached this particular property here and as an input i'm passing and i'm getting this one in the student component html and here you can see it is matching so if you have used this input output then you know much better like how we use the input so if you uh, don't know much about it then i suggest you please go to the my angular uh, tutorial series where we have discussed discussed more on the input output directive so basically now i have used it here now similar to that that one i'm i have taken a output so basically like here on my output i'm calling one method and in this you can see i'm calling this get method and based on that i am setting this property and this property i am assigning here so my input message is basically the input directive which we are passing from this app component to the student component and this output property is basically we are getting it from the child so in the child if you will see for the output we have the event emitter and like then output message and this basically we are setting it on the send value and where is this method is written it is written in the student html so here you can see whatever the child component there is a s3 tag child component in the title and this title information is coming from the app component and this is the button and on like when we will send the data so what it is doing it is changing the our output directive data and sending to the uh, html and through that we are printing here so what we have this is the html piece so let me increase the size so now this is our app component dot html you can see it here now this is the app component dot ts file so basically here is the method and other property now if we will go to the student html so this is the student html and this is student component so here we have these title input output then constructor then we have one method send value so now let's run this application and see on the browser so here you can see i am parent html so it is coming from here like this one then we are calling our child and then we have this text so now if we will call this child component so here it is written child component i am parent component so basically this title we are sending as an input to this one so here you can see we are sending this one from here and it is getting into the title through this input parameter and now when i'll click on this one we can see i am output directory so basically on the click we are printing in the red color and here you can see we are printing into the red color so the now we are going to write a unit test case for the same so for this one let's go to this student component dot specific file and here what i have so what I have done, so this is an student component and we have fixture for the same. So now since we are using the app component also, so what we have to do, we had create an object of this app component and then app fixture and same we have declared inside the before each method and here you can see 
the same and apart from that we have added this app component into the declaration so that declaration and the implementation and the object creation is done now what we will do we will write the unit test case for the input so for writing this one let's write so unit test case for for input directive and here using the async i will use it and inside this one first what i will do i will write f fixture dot detect changes and then since we are using async then we have to use the uh, vanish table so fixture dot vanish table and inside this one what we have to use then then and here what we have to use inside this one we have to write our code so first let take element element equal to f fixture dot debug element dot native element dot query selector and inside this one we have to fetch it using h3 dot inner text and then what we have to see we have to check so before that let's uh, what we will do we will change the value so app component dot my input message equal to what i am changing it to input directive and here what we will expect we will expect so element dot to equal and it should be equal to so basically like what we are doing first we are from the app component means we are changing this value now this value go to this our html page and this title through the input it will change so what it will be let's copy this one let's copy it and put it here and then this will append this also so that we have done now let's save the changes and by that time let's run our test case for that one ng test so what we have done so far first like we are using the student component so since we are using the app component here so first we have to declare these two variable of the type app component and for the fixture and then we have to declare this app component in the declaration and then we have to initialize the object which we have taken above then in the writing unit test case first what we are doing we are changing the value my input message then we are changing like we are getting the direct changes and then we are writing the when is table and then we are getting this element so basically this is h3 and we are taking this s3 from here and then we are expecting like whatever this input text is similar to this or not so let's see once this test run so now here we can see our test case is passing as expected and if we'll go on the browser same we can see like unit test case for input directive is passing now we will write the unit test case for the output directive so let's write it unit test case for output directive and here we will use the async and then so inside this one now what we will write is first component dot send value so what we are doing first we are uh, we are going to trigger this send value method because when we click on this button so basically when we click on this button what it will do it hit this method so that's why first i'm uh, clicking on that one and then fixture dot detect changes like it should detect the changes and then a fixture dot 
when stable and then dot then we have to write our logic and what we have to write the logic so we have like since here you can see this we are hitting using the emit that means the event it is hitting to the event event emitter so for that one to access that one what we have to do so component dot my output dot we have what we have to do we have to use the subscribe and then we have to access this value and for that one expect what we are expecting g dot to equal so now here what we have to expect so we have to expect like i am output directive so here you can see like we are passing this message i am output directive so this we will pass from here so let's write i am output directive now since we are calling as an event emitter so now what we have to do let's call component dot send values now let's save the changes and see the output so it is running now since there is a one test case now we will see after this one like okay now we can see our two test cases passing and on the browser we can see the same so currently it is saying like spec has no expectation so let's see why it is not taking this line and in the code we can see like basically we are using this one here so now let's put it here and see on the browser now and let's make it unit test now let's save it and see on the browser so if we'll go on the browser we can see our test case is passing for the output directive as expected so this is the way we write the unit test case for the input and output directive like first this is for the input directive you can see so here this is the um, da, um, like unit test case for the output directive so basically what we are doing first we are directing the ch changes and then through the subscribe we are checking like uh, in the value change or not change and for the input we are directing the changes and we are assigning the new value and then through the s3 we are checking the same so this is the way of writing the unit test case for the input and output directive so that's it for this video if you have any question and doubt please comment thank you